The 2008 Beijing Olympics was the most successful in Jamaica's history. 50 Jamaican athletes were in Beijing, which was more than any prior Olympic Games. The Beijing Olympics also saw Jamaica securing a total of six gold medals and 11 overall, beating the previous best of nine medals, which were won at the Sydney Olympics. So, what has Jamaica been doing right that has caused the country to be on an upward trajectory with our medal hall at Olympic Games? Joining us in studio this morning for Sunrise Fan Central, Paris Podium, is sports marketing consultant, author, and friend of CVM, Tanya Lee, and former Jamaican sprinter and J3A executive member, Trevor T.C. Campbell, who, as we all should know, competed at the 1972 Munich Olympic Games. Guys, welcome. Thank you. So Thank you. let's start with the, the obvious question. Now, what have we been doing right since Sydney to really have continue to do this high level of success with our medal hall? Tanya? Well, if you start with me, um, I think it's a coaching. coaching. I think we've had, yeah, we've been doing a good job with our coaching over the years. Mm -hmm. I mean, in recent times, I think he needs a statue somewhere. You have the likes of Stephen Francis. When mm -hmm. you look at um, what Glenn Mills has been able to produce with Johan Blake and mm -hmm. As um, you say, Bolt and Warren Ware, mm -hmm. you know, that one, two, three is something that we will always remember. Mm -hmm. And um, just a tremendous um, coaching that we've gotten from Stephen Francis over the years. I mean, where do we start? You know, from people believing that it can be done in Jamaica. You know, Bridget Foster Hilton, Asafa Powell. Um, that school of athletes that he had with mm -hmm. Melanie Walker, that initial pool, really gave Jamaicans that belief that we could usher in a new era in track and field, which we're now seeing the fruits of now. Yeah. And he's occupied so many, so much of those podium spots in the Olympics for the women, mm -hmm. certainly. And this year, Kishane Thompson is looking pretty good again <laughs> on the men's I agree. side. So I, agree. so I think it's a coaching. TC, what about you? Because you've well, been around the sport for a while. I believe the catalyst um, was when clubs decided to go pro. Okay. Um, when that happened, Track and field on the island was no longer a hobby. It mm. now became a profession and a business opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, the approach was different. Mm -hmm. um, athletes now had op different opportunities. Um, first, you, your opportunity was to get a scholarship to go abroad to study to train. Now you can stay home and train. And make a life from it. And make a life from it. Yeah. You can now go from high school to being a pro right here. Okay. You don't have to travel to, 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 to look um, to get your goals. So I think the catalyst was going pro, deciding that the amateurism is a thing of the past, and now we are moving towards the professional um, but you know, setup. But TC, you know, one of the things you will say or you look at, even within the same track and field yeah. aura, we've not necessarily excelled at all um, field events or all track events. Do you think there's something that has naturally gifted Jamaica with the ability to be so good at 100 meter, 200 meter, 400 meter, 110 meter hurdles, uh, discus, a hammer throw versus javelin versus uh, high jump versus, I mean, all of those. And I'm, with triple jump, with long jump, we've excelled in some, but not all. What do you think contributes to that specific kind of area that we're good in track and field with? You, you, you need, in, in new areas, you need one person to break out. Okay. And you have that, you get that breakout um, athlete, younger athletes starting to say, wow. Mm -hmm. This is possible. This is possible. Yeah. And so in everything, you need a leader. Okay. You need somebody to start the track. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that is... So you don't think it's a predisposition that, you know, because I hear them talk about it, the yamo eat and the fast twitch muscle. Uh, we, we, we might have a pre... They have spoken about the fact that Jamaicans do have faster twitch uh, muscles, but I think um, it's, mm -hmm. it's largely that predisposition of actually seeing somebody else do it. That's okay. what it is. I and think we don't like to lose. No. We're going to go into it hard. We don't like to lose. And if you ask <laughs> any one of us, we are better than everybody Absolutely. else. Absolutely. Okay. So it's and a so part you, of if you bring culture. that attitude to training, mm -hmm. to competing, this is the result. And the blueprint is there. And then <coughs> the coaches are there to make it possible. So I mm -hmm. think you see, you are inspired by When you look at even now, Usain Bolt, he will tell mm -hmm. you that he was inspired. We knew that Usain started mm -hmm. doing the two and the four. Mm -hmm. And then Anasafa Paul comes along. There's a the world record, record twice. I mean, 
obviously that's inspiration for Usain Bolt. Okay. So we've seen a Veronica Campbell Brown who would have looked at a Merlin Otte and uh, Michelle Freeman and Juliet Cutbirth and what mm -hmm. they would have done. And then you had a Veronica Campbell Brown and then you had Shelley Elaine. So it's a conveyor belt that happens because you've seen it done and you know mm -hmm. it's possible. So let me ask then, we have one of the greatest products in Issa Boys and Girls Champs, which I think is unrivaled in the world. Nobody can replicate that kind of the kind atmosphere. of feed and atmosphere that For goes sure. around Champs. Do you think that Champs specifically has been a part of the, the product um, or developing the product of what we've seen at Olympic and, and World Games? Uh, it's a foundation on which everything is laid. Mm -hmm. um, young athletes are exposed to professional type training from a tender age of mm -hmm. 13, 14, and you grow up into it. So Champs is definitely, without a doubt, the, um, the foundation. I remember years ago I interviewed Veronica Campbell Brown, mm -hmm. and she mentioned that, I mean, come on, this is <laughs> our Olympic gold medalist, and she mentioned that there is no atmosphere that's equates to champs, nothing. True. When you think about the crowd, the rivalry, the pressure that you have as an athlete at a young age, I think that builds you and it prepares you for what comes on the international stage. Mm -hmm. And again, it's not replicated anywhere else. So that kind of atmosphere, what you need to produce over the couple of days that you're at the championships, you become accustomed to handling that pressure or you're exposed to that pressure from early. So mm -hmm. it's a great... Um, ground for you even when you think about just the atmosphere of competing and we know that's important because an olympic games a world championships that's a high pressure situation and you, you have to bring it i like it but tc you spoke about <laughs> the move from you know the amateurism to professionalism and i think that also would have resonated with the coaching that we're looking at we've actually produced some world-class coaches i think one of the things that we've kind of undervalued is just how important as tanya spoke about the coaches were how did we get so good at developing world-class coaches? Do, can we look to GC Foster specifically? Maybe it was also a combination of factors. How did we get to the level of now having athletes travel from all over the world to come to this tiny island to be coached by a Jamaican? Well, ab absolutely, GC Foster has to be number one on that list. Um, I, I think with the advent of professional um, track and field, what GC Foster did was just not to no longer pr um, produce P coaches. They're now <laughs> producing <laughs> professional Coach. coaches. Um, scientific background, the research, all of that. And, and so with the move to professional um, setup, new ideas coming in, coaches are coming off of the conveyor belt. Yes prepared, not half ready, but ready to take up um, any job. It's just been a, it's it, just a bit of difference maker. It, yes, absolutely. Um, quick one, Tanya. I know I've seen your athletes because, you know, you're one of the a large, I'm conveyable to yourself. See, Jaden and Akira are doing some big things. Talk about how sport has been able to translate beyond just the track to being something that is not a marketable product. Just a real quick one. Absolutely. There are so many of us who have benefited from the successes of the athletes over the years and yes. what we've done in Jamaica. I'm certainly one of them in terms of my career as an athlete manager. And you've looked at the likes of even Jadon Hibbert, who I'm so proud of Jadon. Big personality. He puts a lot of effort into growing his brand because yeah. he recognizes, as many of our athletes do these days, that you have to build all that brand and you have to earn beyond what you're going to make on the track. So proud that he's announced as the first track and field brand ambassador for KFC yesterday. I mean, that's a, that's a momentous thing for us. When you think about it, Jadon is a field athlete. Yeah. A couple of years ago, we, brands were probably only looking at the sprinters. Meters, yeah. Correct. And yeah. now here's a field athlete with a, with a brand deal with a major global brand. So we're very excited about that. And um, it speaks to what TC mentioned earlier, the fact that we now are able to fully commercialize track and field for our athletes. Love that. Well, our guests have been Tanya Lee, sports marketing consultant, author, and head of lead marketing, and Trevor T.C. Campbell, one of those regular faces you can remember from the 1972 Olympics, and a J3A executive member. Kids Unfiltered is up next. Stay with us. More Sunrise after the break. When we celebrate,